All right, honest question here. And by a show of hands, how many of you out there were following your Week 15 matchup, but yet every time you'd open up the box score to see your stats, you found yourself going, what the fuck? Hey, what's going on, everybody? Jake, Fantasy Headliners. Hopefully, everybody's doing well out there. Welcome to Week 16. For many of you, this is known as Championship Sunday, Championship Weekend, whatever you want to call it here in the fantasy football world. There's a lot of leagues wrapping up this week. Now, yes, for all of, uh, all of you out there that are going to Week 17, I will be here again next week helping you out. And I've seen a lot of comments on the videos from the waiver wire, even a lot of people making it into their championships this year. Glad to see that. Glad to be able to be some part of that. Uh, hopefully, I was able to help you guys out You know, at some point here throughout the season. Really appreciate the support. Once again, though, I'm going to reiterate this before I break down these matchups. Just because your season may be ending this week or next week, don't go unsubscribing and leaving. I will be here all year long, starting in January. Got all kinds of things coming up here in 2019. I'll be at the NFL Combine, going to try to get to the draft, National Fantasy Football Convention. Even got uh, maybe got a little bit of fantasy baseball coming here for a few of you guys. Really appreciate the support. But now, not wasting any more time. Very hashtag, what is it? Critical week. Let's talk about some matchups here for the running back positions. Kicking it off on Saturday. No Thursday night game this week, so that gives you a little bit more time to set your lineups. First game on Saturday, Redskins at Titans. So for the Redskins, we're talking about Adrian Peterson. And for a lot of you guys out there, you you hopefully haven't been counting on him here for the past few weeks. He really hasn't done a whole lot. I mean, he, his best game was week 13 here, nine carries, 98 yards, and a touchdown. I believe most of that came on like what was like a 91-yard run. Hasn't been very productive as of late, and I really don't see that changing going forward. This week, the Tennessee Titans are the number one fantasy defense against opposing running backs, giving up on average just about 18 points a game, haven't allowed a rushing touchdown the last three weeks. Definitely a solid defense in Tennessee. You have a struggling offense, uh, an offensive run game, especially there in Washington with Adrian Peterson. It's a critical week, right? Do you want to trust Adrian Peterson here in your fantasy football championship or to get you to the championship? Based off of recent production and where that offense is right now, I'm not risking it. He's going to be one of my sits of the week. All right, for the Titans, and here we go again. Derrick Henry has decided to play running back and get a ton of work here at the end of the season. How did he follow up his ridiculous Week 14 stat line against the Jags? Easy. He almost did it again. This week against the Giants, 33 carries. That's three. Three, three. Two threes. 33 carries for 170 yards and another two touchdowns. That's now over 400 yards and six touchdowns on the ground for Derrick Henry over the past two games. Now, this isn't the, the most difficult of matchup for him. It's the 14th ranked fantasy defense of the Washington Redskins, giving up over 24 points a game. They've allowed rushing touchdowns in three of their last four. Great matchup. I do expect Deion Lewis to still be somewhat involved, uh, but they're going to feed Derrick Henry. You have to think that the, with what they've seen the past couple weeks, they've given him a combined 50 carries in the last two games. They're going to continue to ride him going forward. Decent matchup, huge volume, high touchdown upside. Derrick Henry is going to be another great play. And who would have thought, even middle of the season, that Derrick Henry could possibly be one of the players out there that wins you your fantasy championship. Second game on Sunday is going to be the Baltimore Ravens at the Los Angeles Chargers. Kick it off at the Ravens here. We got Gus the Bus Edwards. And now I guess we talk about Kenneth Dixon. I think Gus still has slightly more value. Uh, he has more touchdown upside, at least on a weekly basis this past week. Still had 19 carries, broke 100 yards again. 104 yards, touchdown on the ground. Kenneth Dixon will be involved. He did also have 11 carries for 48 yards, but wasn't really involved in the passing game like we kind of thought he may be. So he's not going to eat into too much of the value of Gus Edwards. And it's a great matchup this week going against the Chargers. Right now, 24th ranked defense against opposing running backs, giving up on average over 26 points per game. Over their last three games, They've allowed five rushing touchdowns on the ground. Another great matchup. Another one of these games where if you're looking for a flex, because more than likely that's where Gus Edwards would be for you, that's a solid flex here going to the championship game. Someone who you can count on for 15 to 20 touches and high touchdown upside. Not a whole lot of other options out there, especially with all the injuries we're dealing with right now. 
The Chargers, on the other hand, have a little bit more difficult of a matchup. And this one we're really going to have to pay attention to throughout the week. Does Melvin Gordon return? There's a high chance, high probability that he does return this week. The problem with that is they're facing the Baltimore Ravens, currently the number two fantasy defense against opposing running backs, giving up on average 18 points per game. However, they have allowed a rushing touchdown in four of their last five contests. The bad part about it, they've only allowed over 100 yards three times this season. Now, if Melvin Gordon is 100% and he's playing, you've held on to him. He's carried you all season long. You throw him out there again. You really don't want to risk sitting him on the bench, having him be a full participant in this game, and having him go off knowing that he's on your bench. Uh, pay attention to the practice reports. There's still a chance that Austin Eckler sits again. Uh, if that's a, If that happens... Justin Jackson is still a very you know safe option out there. It is a tough matchup, though. Don't overlook that. Really difficult defense there for Baltimore. If Melvin Gordon is 100% by week's end, you kind of got to start him here in your fantasy playoffs. On to the Sunday games now. First one we'll have up here on the schedule would be the Cincinnati Bengals at the Cleveland Browns. For the Bengals, Joe Mixon, he's a good running back. Like I, I think people kind of don't really realize how versatile and how good Joe Mixon could really be if he got over 20 touches every single game. The guy is like Le'Veon Bell light, like the diet version of Le'Veon Bell. But he's in Cincinnati on a horrible team, in a bad offense, with a bad coach, and a lot of people don't get to see it like they really should. He does have over 100 yards rushing his last two games. Why? Well, in both games, he's had over 25 touches. Three touchdowns on the ground here over the past two weeks, and he's definitely moved his way up into that top 10 of fantasy running backs, at least in PPR leagues. This guy, if he can finish the, the year strong, could be a viable you know, RB1 going into next year's draft with somebody that you could probably get in the second round of most drafts. Don't forget about Joe Mixon. As far as this week goes, great matchup against the Browns. The 25th ranked defense uh, against opposing running backs, giving up on average over 26 points per game. Gio Bernard hasn't really eaten into the uh, the volume of Joe Mixon. He's been seeing a lot of work, especially with Jeff Driscoll under center. I like Joe Mixon a lot again this year. There's not a whole lot of options in that Cincinnati offense. He may be option number one and seeing a lot of volume here this week. Who out there wants to talk about a little chub? Not literally a little, you know what I mean. Nick Chubb of the Cleveland Browns, another great play again this week. One of my starts of the week. Kind of had a little bit of a letdown for a lot of people last week, but yet he still rushed for 100 yards, 20 carries, 100 yards. The touchdowns and and passing game wasn't really there, and that's what limited him this week. He had had five straight games with at least one rushing touchdown, and he's somebody who's going to see volume every single week, 15 to 20-plus touches on a weekly basis, and now he's going against the Cincinnati Bengals, who just a few weeks ago, back in Week 12, he had 28 carries, 84 yards and a touchdown, and then added in three receptions for another 44 and a touchdown. Great matchup. He's beat them before. They are the 31st ranked defense against opposing running backs, giving up over 30 points per game. Definitely a great start. Nick Chubb, uh, I've talked about him a lot this year, and he's been a solid option since they traded Carlos Hyde. I love some Nick Chubb this week. As far as Duke Johnson goes, eh, kind of hit and miss. Unless you're in a deeper league, 12 teams or larger, looking for a flex play in a PPR league, that's the only place I would really trust Duke Johnson going forward. The ceiling just isn't really there on a consistent basis. He he may get the opportunity, but he's kind of big play dependent for that. Last week, he only had four carries, 28 yards, added in another four receptions for 25. Nothing to write home about. A decent play, flex play, PPR leagues, large leagues only though in my opinion. Buccaneers and Cowboys are next for the Buccaneers. you got Peyton Barber, who had a decent game again last week. 19 carries, 85 yards, and a touchdown against a tough Baltimore Ravens uh, run defense. Not bad. It was his best game since week 11. Uh, He does have touchdowns now, four out of his last five games. The problem is the rushing numbers really aren't there. So if he doesn't get the touchdown, you're going to be sorely, sorely disappointed. It is a difficult matchup. The Dallas Cowboys... Ranked 8th against opposing running backs, giving up, on average, a little over 22 points per game in PPR leagues. They did allow two scores last week to Marlon Mack, who looked great. But is Peyton Barber the same type of talent in the same type of offense as a Marlon Mack? Not really. I hate to trust him here in championship week. 
Uh, it's not something where I would want to start him or say that he is a great start. There are you know worse options out there. He's a decent flex play, tough matchup. Hopefully you have a better option. If you're not hampered by injuries, then I wouldn't be looking at Peyton Barber a whole lot. It's just too up and down in that offense. And like I said, he doesn't score. You're going to be pissed. For the Cowboys, we've got Zeke Elliott. Now, obviously, he's going to be in your lineup, but it's a great week to have Zeke. He's worked his way all the way up inside the top five as far as fantasy running backs goes. A little bit of a down week last week. Only had 18 carries for 87 yards, no touchdowns, but he's still involved in the passing game. Added another seven receptions for 41 yards. In PPR leagues, you're loving Ezekiel Elliott right now, and he's got a great matchup at the perfect time for you, going up against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, who give up, on average, over 28 points per game. Definitely a great matchup. If you have Zeke, he's a lock in your lineup, and hopefully he can carry you to a fantasy championship here this year. Vikings and Lions are next for the Vikings. We got Dalvin Cook, the first one we're talking about. And I had a hater comment here this week, you know, going back to one of my really, really early videos, talking about how much I liked Dalvin Cook in the preseason and how he didn't turn out, how he's currently in the 30s at the running back position. The dude hasn't been healthy all year long. Started the season off two double-digit games, had a string of injuries right there, which really held him out till about week nine. Since week nine, he's had five out of six double-digit games, including a, probably his best game to date last week against the Miami Dolphins. 19 carries, 136 yards, two touchdowns, and a nifty spin move there to get one of them. He looks great. He looks explosive. He looks healthy. He's going to get the opportunity, hopefully, with this new offensive coordinator. And they have a decent matchup. The Detroit Lions, 19th against opposing running backs, giving up, on average, over 25 points a game. The problem is Latavius Murray is still somewhat involved. Why? I really have no idea. Dalvin looks great, and he's putting up great numbers, great efficiency. Latavius Murray, he still had 15 carries for 68 yards and a touchdown. If a little bit more of that volume can go Dalvin's way, he's a surefire lock wide, or excuse me, running back one rest of season, and then going into next season, definitely a name that we need to remember. Love Dalvin Cook again this week. Latavius Murray, I really wouldn't start him unless you were absolutely buried with injuries and have no other options. Really not too excited about the Detroit Lions running game. I mean, they had Zach Zenner last week get his second touchdown in as many weeks. He had 10 carries, 45 yards, nothing too crazy. Woo who cares, really? You know what I mean? Now they get the, uh, the Minnesota Vikings run defense, currently 11th against opposing running backs. This is not one of these run offenses that can just throw a name in there and have them be productive. I mean, they're totally touchdown dependent at this point. And as long as there's a running back playing for the Detroit Lions that's not named Carryon Johnson, I have zero interest in this backfield. Bills and Patriots are next. And for the Bills, we have... I, I don't know who will be the running back for the Bills this week. You got LaShawn McCoy banged up. Chris Ivory banged up. Marcus Murphy banged up. Maybe Keith Ford? Maybe. Maybe it's just going to be Josh Allen. Maybe he'll just do both. He'll do two positions. Can we petition for Josh Allen to get two paychecks in this game and just have him play running back and quarterback? Can we do that? Because really, that may be what it comes down to. Not a whole lot of options. And it's too bad because the Patriots are a team that you can actually run on a little bit. They've allowed over 100 yards in their last two games. Uh, they've been giving up, on average, right around 25 points a game to opposing running backs decent matchup the problem is not a whole lot of options for buffalo right now need to follow the practice reports and the injury reports let's see who's actually going to start for them this week but regardless I'm, they're not going to be too high on my list more than likely it's probably going to be somebody that you've never even heard of unless some of these guys can miraculously heal or play with dislocated elbows we'll have to wait and see hey i got an idea on the patriot side of the football we have too many running backs let's give one of them to buffalo just for the game let's get some fantasy points somewhere because on the New England side, I had all these guys as a sit last week, and I'm going to do it again this week. There's just too many of them. They're eating into each other's value, and, and it's making them all borderline not playable. Last week, Sony Michelle had a whopping 13 carries for 59 yards. James White, two carries for 12 yards, added in five receptions for 25. Rex Burkhead, also involved, four, uh, four runs for 25 yards, three receptions for 18. None of these guys had over eight fantasy points. It makes it, like I said, almost impossible to start them on a weekly basis. Too difficult to trust in a decent matchup going up against Buffalo, the 23rd ranked defense against opposing running backs, giving up on average 26 points per game. Another issue, all 26 of those points are going to be distributed between 
Yep, those three guys. Makes it impossible to know who to trust. Bill Belichick likes to keep us guessing. And, and like I said, it's nearly impossible to know whose week it's going to be. They're all touchdown dependent. Got to pass on all those running backs in New England. Packers and Jets. And for the Packers, I'm starting to worry for everybody who's owning Aaron Jones at this point. Not looking good for week 16. As of right now, there's nothing been officially reported. However, they did just claim Capri Bibbs off of waivers. And if that tells me anything, it's that their hopes aren't too high to have Mr. Aaron Jones back on Sunday. If that's the case, Jamal Williams will be the lead back once again for the Green Bay Packers. Came in last week after Jones went out, added 12 carries, 55 yards, and a touchdown, another four receptions for 42. And now it's somewhat of a difficult matchup. The number 10 ranked defense against opposing running backs, giving up on average 22 points a game. However, if there is no Aaron Jones, I do not expect Capri Bibbs to be up to speed in that offense enough to go out there and take huge volume away from Jamal Williams. If Aaron Jones sits... Jamal Williams is not only one of the top waiver wire ads for the week, but he's also a solid flex play. All right, on the Jets' side, you got Elijah McGuire, who we'll talk about. Another decent game this past week in Week 15. 18 carries, 42 yards, but did get that touchdown, which really helped save his fantasy day. Now has over 14 fantasy points in two straight games. Touchdowns in the last two weeks. Uh, Not a bad matchup going up against the Green Bay Packers. They're a little bit demoralized right now. They know they're not in the playoff hunt anymore. One of their worst seasons here. They've now missed the playoffs two straight seasons. Not a whole lot going right in Green Bay right this second. This past week against the uh, the Chicago Bears, they allowed 81 yards in the touchdown. They've allowed over 100 yards rushing in four of their last six games. It's a great matchup for Elijah McGuire. Not exactly giving me that warm fuzzy because you never know when that New York Jet offense can just totally implode. But he does have high upside and could be a decent flex play in larger leagues here this week for Week 16. Texans and Eagles are next for the Texans. We still don't know about Lamar Miller. I hate to see guys get hurt. And as far as fantasy football goes, I really hate to see them get hurt that early in the game because it really messes up our scores for the week. Not that those are more important than a guy's health, but you guys know what I mean. What do we do going forward? Alfred Blue is next in line to get the bulk of the carries in Houston. We know that. But we also know now that Donta Foreman is eligible to return. Does he come back in his first game and get you 20-plus touches? Probably not. More than likely, if Miller can't go, Alfred Blue will get the bulk of the touches in a decent matchup against the Philadelphia Eagles, giving up over 26 points per game. They've allowed rushing touchdowns in five of their last six games. Definitely a solid matchup. We just need to kind of wait and see if Lamar Miller plays or if he sits. If he does, Alfred Blue, not a bad flex play here for Week 16. All right, for the Eagles, we got Josh Adams. Wendell, don't tell me I have Smallwood and a little bitty sprinkle of Darren Sproles in there. Now, Josh Adams' fantasy production has really started to decline the past few weeks. This past week, still had 15 carries, but only managed to get 28 yards. Did save it with a touchdown on the ground, but Wendell Smallwood had the better fantasy day. 10 carries, 48 yards, two touchdowns on the ground. Three rushing touchdowns. Do I expect that this week? Not against a tough Houston Texan run defense. Uh, right now, currently ninth against opposing running backs, giving up on average right around 22 points a game. Similar to New England, though, all three of these guys are going to be involved, and they eat into each other's ceiling, into their production. Who is it going to be? It's really going to be touchdown dependent going forward in a difficult matchup. If you have better options, I'm not starting any of the running backs in Philadelphia. If I had to gamble and go with one of them, I'm chasing the volume, and I'm going with Josh Adams. Falcons and Panthers are next, and well, 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 look who decided to play running back this past week. Yep, Tevin Coleman decided to make an appearance, you know, mostly because of the matchup against the Arizona Cardinals, one of the worst run defenses in football, but Coleman hadn't done much of anything all year. And then he goes out and gets his second 100-yard rushing game, his first since week two. 11 carries, 145 yards, and a touchdown on the ground for Tevin Coleman. Ah. He's just too difficult to figure out. You think you, you think you know somebody. You think you got him figured out, and wham, he just decides to play running back again. Thanks, Tevin. But now they get a tough matchup against the Carolina Panthers. But what Panthers team do we see? The one who was fighting for one of those last playoff spots or the one that looked absolutely demoralized after the loss on Monday night to the Saints? There's just not a whole lot going well in Carolina right now, and hopefully they don't just give up on the rest of the season. Tevin Coleman could be a sneaky play this week. However, he's been so hard to trust. He's been so inconsistent. The only positive right now, Edo Smith was placed on IR. So the bulk of the touches, 
they're going to go to Tevin Coleman. A little bit more of a difficult matchup this week than he had last week, but he could see more volume, and he could be a solid flex play here in Week 16. But be careful. Tread lightly. The dude has been inconsistent as all inconsistencies can be. He's been bad at times. But everything is aligning. The stars are aligning for him to have another solid day on the ground. He could be a decent play here for Week 16. There are not many running backs that I would start over Christian McCaffrey of the Carolina Panthers. You go and you look at the box score and you see no rushing touchdowns, no receiving touchdowns, and you see what happened. And then you find out he threw for a touchdown for 50 yards. The guy does everything. He's up to the number two fantasy running back in PPR leagues. Definite must start. Great matchup going up against the Atlanta Falcons. If you're in the championship and you got Christian McCaffrey, I'd be pretty happy because right now the Falcons are allowing over 30 points per game to opposing running backs. Giants and Colts are next, and a lot of people cursing the name of Saquon Barkley last week due to his letdown here in the fantasy playoffs with only 14 carries for 31 yards, but it was against one of the toughest run defenses in football in the Tennessee Titans. Now, he gets the Indianapolis Colts, who are still a solid defense, but they are giving up over 25 points per game. They've only allowed two rushing touchdowns over their last three games, so they are playing decent football there in Indianapolis. They look great this past weekend. But it's Saquon Barkley. He did have one bad game. Does that mean that we're going to get pissed and bench him for the fantasy playoffs or the fantasy championship? Nope. We're still starting Saquon Barkley. I don't care who he's playing. That ceiling and that upside is way too good to pass up. Can you guess who's back? Who's back again? Yep, it's Marlon Mack making a return to fantasy relevancy. This past week, 27 carries for 139 yards and two touchdowns against the Dallas Cowboys, who were led to believe to be one of the top defenses in football, at least the way they were playing as of late. Mack ran all over them this past week, and now he gets a better matchup. The 28th-ranked defense of the New York Giants giving up on average 29 points per game, and they're playing at home. I love some Marlon Mack this week, especially if they continue to give him that type of volume. If he can get you 20-plus touches in a week, more than likely you're going to be happy with the production that you get. Uh, Naheem Hines is somebody who'll be more involved in the passing game. Really like Marlon Mack in a decent matchup this week. He's going to be one of my starts of the week. Jags and Dolphins. And a lot of people were scratching their head this past week with Leonard Fournette. Also, only one carry in the second half. And then they came out and said it was part of the game plan. What kind of game plan is that? Now word is coming out that he's dealing with a foot injury again. And if that's the case, fire up TJ Yeldon. Great matchup this week, but we really need to pay attention to the practice reports and see how this plays out later on in the week. If Fournette sits, TJ Yeldon borderline becomes almost a must-start in some formats. Why? They're playing the Miami Dolphins, who give up over 28 points a game to opposing running backs. They've given up four rushing touchdowns the last two weeks. Definitely, definitely a team you want to start your running backs against. Problem is, we just don't know who the running back is going to be yet. Monitor it closely. Whoever's going to start for Jacksonville this week, they need to be in your lineup, at least as a flex option, just due to this great matchup alone. All right, now for the head scratcher that is the Miami Dolphins. We saw Frank Gore down. Hate to see that. But we kind of assumed that, hey, now Kenyon Drake's going to get, you know, a full workload once again. Not so fast. Kalen Balaj, the rookie who hadn't had an opportunity really all year, came out 12 carries. 123 yards in a touchdown compared to Kenyon Drake's one carry for six yards. They just don't like Kenyon Drake in Miami. I don't know why he produces when he gets volume. He just never gets the volume. Now it looks like Kalen Balaj is in line for a larger workload. Not going to give the full workload to Kenyon Drake, but it's a difficult matchup anyway. They're going up against the Jacksonville Jaguars, the fifth ranked defense against opposing running backs. And you don't really know which running or which defense is going to show up for the Jags. Two weeks ago, Derrick Henry ran all over them. Last week against Washington, only allowed 60 yards. They've only allowed over 100 yards one game since week seven. And that was to Derrick Henry and that huge Titans game. I don't know. I don't know if I want to trust the drama that is Miami and the drama that is the defense of the Jacksonville Jaguars. It's almost borderline too consistent to trust at this point of the fantasy season. Rams and Cardinals and all the Todd Gurley owners at one time are doing this because they don't want him to miss this game. More than likely, he's brought you all the way into these fantasy playoffs. And in one fail swoop, he could take you out. Now, they are playing the Arizona Cardinals, which is probably one of the best matchups he could possibly have. 
But then again, it's the Arizona Cardinals, and they are horrible in general. Do they need Todd Gurley for four quarters to beat the Arizona Cardinals? Probably not. Not really, especially if they get out to a big lead early. Does this turn into a game where maybe they just rest Todd Gurley? Use John Kelly for a week. We really don't know. I can't imagine them sitting him completely if he's 100% healthy. The problem is we don't know if he's 100% healthy or not. He will be limited here to start the week off. Something we need to pay attention to. Because if he's limited going into the weekend, I can see a larger dose of John Kelly giving them the opportunity to rest Gurley a little bit so they have them for, so they have him for their playoff stretch. They don't seem to really care about the fantasy playoffs. For the Cardinals, we have David Johnson, who's been a major disappointment majority of the year this past week. 11 carries, 33 yards, and a touchdown on the ground. Added in another three catches for 68, which really helped give him a, a better fantasy day. Right now, he's still running back 12 uh, in, in PPR leagues, and it's not a bad matchup in a game which they will have to try to, to score points against the Rams. The Rams will have to be able to score points against the Cardinals. I mean... It's the Cardinals. Everybody scores against the Cardinals. Uh, So I expect a lot of David Johnson in this game. If it's not in the run game, he should get a little bit more work in the passing game. Rams giving up on average 24 points per game. That's 15th in the league, so middle of the road. They did allow three rushing touchdowns last week to the Philadelphia Eagles. So they have that going for him. David Johnson, as much as I want to say he's a a high-end RB2, at this point for your fantasy team, he may almost be your flex. There are better options out there. But he does have that crazy high upside that you want to have in your lineup in Week 16. Bears and Niners next for the Bears, Tariq Cohen, Jordan Howard. Now, Tariq Cohen, especially in PPR leagues, I want to say he's almost a must start. He's had double digits four out of his last five games. Right now, he's running back 11 in PPR leagues, even though his numbers have started to slowly kind of come back down to earth. They were getting a little bit crazy there. This past week, had five receptions for 31 yards and a touchdown Added in another five carries for 21 yards. Not huge numbers, but that touchdown upside, that explosiveness is always there. Jordan Howard, somebody who's had good weeks back-to-back now, 19 carries in the last two games. This past week, only 60 yards, but did have that touchdown on the ground. He's now had double digits two straight weeks. And now they get the 22nd-ranked defense of the San Francisco 49ers, who've allowed rushing touchdowns for four straight weeks. Now, if anything, if I have any concerns here with Tariq Cohen, it's that they get a lead in the first half and they lean more on the run in the second half with Jordan Howard. They both have upside and they both have value this week, in my opinion. They're both flex plays at best, but I wouldn't have an issue with Tariq Cohen or Jordan Howard in my lineup this week. The exact opposite goes for the San Francisco 49ers. Matt Breida, Jeff Wilson Jr., whoever else they wanted to put back there, I don't want anything to do with them this week. They're pretty much going to be sits of the week for me, all of them. Why? The Rams' defense is third against opposing running backs. They've allowed one rushing touchdown over their last three games. They've only allowed three 100-yard games all season. One of the best run defenses all football. And then you have the injury concerns of Matt Breida. Uh, To me, it's just too risky not wanting to take that chance here in Week 16. Steelers and Saints up next for the Steelers. We may have James Conner. We don't know yet. That's something we need to pay attention to as the week goes on. But even if James Conner comes back, am I the only one that can see Jalen Samuels having a larger role in this offense going forward? Kind of just to take some of the burden off James Conner? It's entirely possible. And if that happens, they're going to cancel each other's value out and really make them touchdown dependent, hit or miss on a weekly basis which is horrible at this time of the fantasy season. A lot of you guys are looking forward to James Conner coming back. But does he come back to the same workload? I'm not buying that yet. And it's a crazy difficult matchup against the Saints, who have been playing great football on the defensive side the past few weeks. They haven't allowed a rushing touchdown for four straight games. They haven't allowed over 100 yards to opposing running backs in one game at all, all season. One of the best run defenses in football. We need to see what happens with James Conner. Now, if Conner sits, Jalen Samuel still has that flex play potential because we know he's going to see the volume. If Conner plays, though, I'm a little bit worried on which one is going to see the bulk of the work here this weekend. On the Saints side, we have Alvin Kamara, who's been somewhat of a headache and a disappointment you know, as of late, but he came back with a decent game this past week. 14 carries, 67 yards, and a touchdown. Another seven receptions for 36 yards. 
kind of what we expect from Alvin Kamara. Uh, he's somebody who's going to be in your lineup almost regardless every single week. Mark Ingram, on the other hand, has just gotten to that point where he, he's lost the efficiency. The production is not there. The touchdowns have not been there. Only one in his last four games. It's a difficult matchup. The Steelers right now are the sixth-ranked defense against opposing running backs, giving up just over 20 points per game. The issue, Kamara is going to see the bulk of that. Ingram, at my, in my opinion, is just too risky uh, to put in my lineup here this week. Chiefs and Seahawks up next for the Chiefs. Don't know if Spencer Ware is going to play or not yet either. However, I have this sneaky suspicion that no matter what, Damian Williams earned himself a large portion of that backfield going forward. Spencer Ware's dealing with a hamstring injury. They're not going to bring him back and then all of a sudden give him 20 carries while they throw Damian Williams on the bench, especially after what he did last week, 10 carries, 49 yards, two touchdowns on the ground, another six receptions for 74 yards. He's going to be involved in this Kansas City Chiefs offense. The best thing that we can hope for at this point is Spencer Ware to sit and start Damian Williams once again because we know he's going to see the volume. If Ware plays, it's going to eat into a little bit uh, a little bit of that. I still think Damian Williams would have the slight edge on value and would be the one that I would rather have in my lineup, especially in PPR leagues. They are going up against the Seattle Seahawks, giving up on average 25 points per game to opposing running backs. However, hadn't allowed uh, any rushing touchdowns for three straight weeks. So they've been playing better football here as of late. Damian Williams, he's got slightly more value in my opinion. However, watch those practice reports and injury reports. If Spencer Ware sits, Damian Williams is another good play. Speaking of a good play on the Seattle side, Chris Carson will be another great start this week. One of my starts of the week this week. He's coming off a game where he had 22 carries, 119 yards, and a touchdown. Now has touchdowns in four out of his last five. And now he gets one of the worst run defenses against opposing fantasy running backs in the Kansas City Chiefs who are giving up over 30 points per game to opposing running backs, including rushing touchdowns in three straight. Chris Carson should see the volume. There's a chance that Rashad Penny misses again. And if that's the case, Chris Carson is going to be one of these surefire locks that I would want to have in my lineup here in Week 16. Monday Night Football, we got the Broncos and the Raiders. Broncos, big disappointment with Phillip Lindsay last week. Arguably one of his worst games of the season. 14 carries. 24 yards, no touchdowns on the ground. Did add in another four receptions for 20 yards, but no touchdowns. And it really hurt a lot of people last week in fantasy football. Now they get a lot better matchup, though. The 21st ranked defense of the Oakland Raiders giving up on average 26 points per game. Really not a whole lot of other options there to take away from Phillip Lindsay. It's still his job. He'll still see the bulk of the work. He's still involved in the passing game. Decent matchup this week. I still like Phillip Lindsay a lot, and I'm not afraid to throw him right back into my lineup this week. For the Raiders, we got Doug Martin and Jalen Richard. Doug Martin had a great matchup last week. The matchup in which you want to start your running backs against, against the Cincinnati Bengals. And then he puts up nine carries for 39 yards. Not a whole lot. Jalen Richard, only four carries for nine yards. However, at least he added in five receptions for 67. But this week, they get the Denver Broncos, the 13th ranked defense against opposing running backs. But they haven't given up a rushing touchdown on the ground to an opposing running back since week six. Tough matchup. They didn't capitalize against an easy opponent last week. In my opinion, the Oakland Raiders' backfield is just too risky of a start to throw them in my lineup, especially when we're right here in the middle of the fantasy playoffs or even the fantasy football championships. All right, those are all the matchups for the running back position here for Week 16. Hopefully that was able to help set your lineups. Good luck to everybody out there in the fantasy championships, in the playoffs, fighting for spots. Really appreciate your support. Make sure you stay tuned. Got a lot of stuff coming down the pipe. We're not stopping here at the end of the uh, the fantasy football season. We're going year-round. Looking forward to talking to you guys more here in the future. Have a good rest of the week. We'll talk to you later. Thanks. Bye.